In this episode, let's compare mics you could use for indoor dialogue in really echoey rooms. Check this out. All right, we all know how the onboard mic on most cameras sound, not great and really not well suited for situations like this. We're in a very echoey room. I've got my kitchen where the camera's sitting, um, all hardwood floors, relatively low ceiling here. It's eight feet, eight foot ceiling here. It opens up to I think 12 feet back there, but really sounds horrible audibly. And um, the onboard mics for most cameras, they, you know, they'll pick up, they're plenty sensitive, but they pick up everything that you don't want in addition to everything you do want. So not a great choice. So this is just sort of the baseline so you can hear what that sounds like. Then let's compare two mics that you might think would be well suited for this kind of situation. One's a shotgun mic, and they, some of you are saying, whoa, 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 shotgun mics are not for indoor. And I think um, that, that's probably true, but let's just take a look at it because I think a lot of us on a budget doing, you know, enthusiasts trying to make film and video on a budget are going to, you know, that's probably something we can afford and probably something we would use. Um, but technically, the, are, there is an argument that you would want to use instead a hypercardioid um, small diaphragm condenser mic. So uh, let's compare two of those. One is the Rode NTG2, that's our shotgun mic, and it's about a $270 US mic. It's one that I've used in a lot of my videos up until this point and really struggled in echoey places, even with that shotgun mic, which is supposed to be very directional. And I guess the, under the reason for that is that shotgun mics, um, their interference tube design, those are the slits that you see on the side. The way those work is it's actually fairly good at rejecting high frequency sound from the sides, but it is not as good at rejecting lower frequency sound. So you get kind of this strange, um, sometimes a strange effect where it's rejecting the high frequency stuff, but you're still getting the low frequency and it doesn't sound awesome. And it doesn't, you know, doesn't really isolate perfectly. So that's where a hypercardioid mic comes in, where it's supposed to be better at rejecting um, sound from all frequencies, but let's see how it actually stacks up. So first of all, here's the Rode NTG2. Again, you've heard this mic before. If you've watched any of my previous videos, it's a pretty decent mic. It's $270 US. It has an XLR connector, so you have to bring it into something that has an XLR input. In this case, I'm using a Tascam DR60D. And then on this side, we have our Audio-Technica um, AT4053B. Not, <laughs> not the most, not the easiest name to remember. In any case, uh, aside from its name, that's what this is here. Now, both of these are mounted right here, just out of frame. So they're about uh, 18 to 24 inches from my mouth, and they're pointed probably just right in this direction right here. So um, that I think is typically how you're gonna wanna position these. So I could go up higher and down at a steeper angle, but um, we may try that a little later on. So this is what those two sound like side by side. And are they perfect? I don't think either of them are perfect. I'm hoping that the Audio-Technica does a little bit better in these circumstances because I've really struggled to capture good audio in very echoey environments like this. And there are lots of really cool places visually that have bad acoustics and lots of echo and uh, slap back and um, bass that builds up in the corners and all sorts of issues like, acoustically. So that's what these two sound like. Let's take a closer look. Thank you. 